China is building something huge. It's not another dam or a bridge, but a facility that could produce nearly unlimited clean energy. Right now, in the city of Mianyang, crews are working on a laser fusion research center so powerful it aims to replicate the energy of the sun in a lab. No smoke, no fossil fuels, just raw power created by smashing atoms together under intense heat and pressure. But how is that even possible? What makes this different from other energy megaprojects? And why is China moving so fast on this, while others are still testing the basics? For decades, scientists have chased the idea of nuclear fusion, the same process that powers the sun. The idea is simple. Take two small atoms, smash them together, and release a massive amount of energy. Do it right, and you get clean power with no carbon emissions, no long-term radioactive waste, but doing it right? That's been the hard part. Most fusion projects around the world use massive magnetic machines called tokamaks. They heat hydrogen gas or plasma to over 100 million degrees and try to hold it in place long enough for fusion to happen. It's complex, expensive, and after years of effort, nobody's gotten more energy out than they put in, at least not in a way that's practical. China has been working on those too, but now they're trying something different. They're building a massive laser-powered fusion facility, a machine designed to slam tiny hydrogen pellets with enough force to mimic the conditions inside a star. If it works, the result could be clean, nearly unlimited energy. So how does it work? How does it compare to what the US and others are building? And why is this project being watched so closely? To understand what China's doing, we need to rewind a bit. Fusion research started long before this new facility in China. Back in the 1950s, both the US and the Soviet Union were already studying fusion, mainly as part of nuclear weapons research. The early goal was not energy, it was power. But as scientists better understood the process, they started wondering, what if we could control this reaction and use it to power homes instead of bombs? That led to decades of experimentation. Magnetic fusion reactors, like tokamaks and stellarators, became the main approach. These reactors use powerful magnets to hold plasma in place while it gets hot enough for fusion. The US took a different path too. In the 1990s, it began building the National Ignition Facility, a massive laser fusion research center in Livermore, California. Its goal was to test a different fusion method, inertial confinement fusion. Instead of magnets, NIF uses 192 powerful lasers to blast a tiny fuel pellet all at once. The idea is to compress it so fast and so evenly that the atoms inside slam together and fuse. It took years of trial and error, but in December 2022, NIF finally reached ignition. For the first time, a fusion reaction released more energy than the fuel absorbed. That was a major breakthrough. But even then, the reaction only lasted fractions of a second, and it still took far more energy to power the lasers than the reaction produced overall. At the same time, international efforts like ITER, a massive fusion project in France, are focused on magnetic fusion. It's backed by over 30 countries, including China, the US, and the EU. But ITER won't be operational until the 2030s. Private companies in the US are also racing toward fusion, with startups like TAE Technologies, Commonwealth Fusion Systems, and Helion are trying to build smaller, faster reactors, and claiming they can beat governments to the finish line. But so far, none of them have hit ignition. In short, fusion is no longer a fringe idea. Governments are funding it. Private capital is betting on it. And China's not just watching. It's entering the laser fusion race with serious momentum. So what exactly is fusion? Take two or more hydrogen atoms, heat them until they're stripped down to their nuclei and slam them together. If they fuse, they form helium and release a ton of energy. It's a cleaner, more efficient process than anything we have now. Fusion doesn't create long-term radioactive waste. There's no chain reaction, so it can't melt down like a fission plant. Compare that to nuclear fission, 
which splits large atoms like uranium to release energy. Fission is what powers today's nuclear plants, but it produces long-lasting radioactive waste and comes with meltdown risks. Fusion doesn't have those problems. The fuel is abundant. The waste is minimal. There's no chain reaction to spiral out of control. But achieving fusion requires a reactor that can handle temperatures hotter than the sun and keep everything stable for long enough to get a net gain in energy. So far, that's only been achieved in extremely controlled lab conditions. Turning that into something that can run continuously at industrial scale is still out of reach. That's where laser fusion comes in. Instead of using huge magnets to trap plasma like in a tokamak, laser fusion compresses fuel using brute force. High-powered laser beams fired all at once at a tiny target. Sound complex? It is. But the payoff could be massive. That brings us to laser fusion, also called inertial confinement fusion, or ICF. Here's how it works. A tiny capsule filled with fusion fuel, usually deuterium and tritium, is placed inside a chamber. Dozens or even hundreds of high-powered lasers are fired at the capsule all at once. The heat and pressure cause the outer layer to explode outward, which forces the inner layer to implode. That implosion creates the insane temperatures and pressure needed for fusion to start. Timing is everything. If the lasers are not aligned perfectly, if the fuel pellet is not shaped just right, the reaction fails. In 2022, NIF became the first in the world to achieve ignition. It released more energy from a fusion reaction than was absorbed by the fuel pellet. Not by the whole system, but still, a huge milestone. The challenge now is making this process repeatable, efficient, and fast enough to be useful. A single reaction is not enough. You'd need one every few seconds to produce a meaningful flow of power. Laser fusion also demands enormous precision in construction. The optics, mirrors, fuel capsules, and cooling systems all need to function in sync. Even tiny defects can throw off a reaction and ruin the shot. That's what China is betting on. China saw what NIF accomplished and decided to build something similar. But this time, the goal is not just research. It's to lead in fusion tech and maybe even build a system that can one day produce real, usable energy. China's been in the fusion race for a while, but what's changed is how fast they're trying to catch up. They've already made headlines with their tokamak reactor, nicknamed the Artificial Sun. It's officially called EAST, the Experimental Advanced Superconducting Tokamak, and it's been breaking records for how long it can sustain superheated plasma. At one point, it hit 160 million degrees Celsius and held it for over 100 seconds. Then there's the HL2M tokamak in Chengdu. It's another magnetic fusion reactor, part of the same push. Together, these machines show that China isn't just experimenting. They're scaling up, testing designs, and building experience fast. But now they're moving beyond magnets. The new laser fusion facility in Mianyang signals a major shift Instead of copying what's already out there, China is doubling down on a method that could go further, faster. And that brings us to the core of their current efforts, the facility in Mianyang. This location is not random. Mianyang is known for weapons research. It's home to several labs under the China Academy of Engineering Physics, the same institution behind China's nuclear weapons program. Satellite images show a large rectangular structure with four distinct laser bays, each angled toward a central target chamber. Each laser bay is expected to house high power beams aimed at a fuel pellet the size of a pinhead. When fired in sync, those lasers will slam into the pellet from multiple directions, heating and compressing it in just billionths of a second. And if the conditions are just right, fusion happens. This process, called direct drive fusion, what's especially interesting is how fast China is moving. According to experts analyzing the satellite images, construction on this site only began a few years ago. Now, it's nearly complete. If operational timelines hold, the facility could begin testing within the next two to three years. But this is not just about science. Some analysts believe the Mianyang project may also serve defense goals. 
In the US, laser fusion research helps simulate nuclear weapons performance without actual testing. China may be building similar capabilities, using fusion experiments to fine-tune its own warhead designs while staying within global test ban treaties. However, that doesn't mean this is only about the military. The official message is focused on clean energy research. But with dual-use technology like this, the line between civilian and military often blurs. But let's just say this works, and China figures out how to get consistent ignition. That changes everything. Right now, the world runs on fuels that pollute the air, warm the planet, and rely on unstable supply chains. Natural gas, coal, oil. We burn through billions of tons every year. And while solar and wind are growing fast, they depend on the weather. Battery storage helps, but it's expensive and limited. Fusion could solve all of that. The fuel for laser fusion, hydrogen isotopes like deuterium and tritium, is not rare. Deuterium can be pulled from seawater. Tritium is harder to get, but it can be bred from lithium, another element we already mine in bulk. It doesn't produce the kind of long-term radioactive waste that fission reactors do. And there's no risk of a meltdown. If something goes wrong, the reaction just stops. This is why governments and researchers keep chasing it. The energy potential is massive. One kilogram of fusion fuel can yield about 90,000 megawatt hours of energy. That's enough to power an entire U.S. city for a day and with no emissions. But let's be honest, understanding how all this fits together is not easy. If you're someone who actually wants to learn about this stuff, not just watch from the sidelines, then you'll probably love today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is an interactive learning app that helps you master everything from physics and math to computer science and data analysis. It's perfect if you're curious about the kind of problem solving that makes breakthroughs like Fusion possible. What I really like about Brilliant is that it teaches you by doing. You're not just watching a lecture, you're solving problems, testing ideas, and building a real understanding from the ground up. It's the same kind of thinking that goes into the breakthroughs we're talking about in this video, and the best part? You can learn at your own pace. Even just a few minutes a day makes a difference. You can try Brilliant free for 30 days using my link, and you'll also get 20% off a full year of premium. Just click the link in the description or scan the QR code on screen to get started. Now, back to our topic. If China's facility hits ignition consistently, it would be a signal that practical fusion is no longer a physics experiment. It would be a step toward fusion systems that could one day power the grid, stabilize electric prices, and reshape entire energy markets. And Mian Yang could be the first step. And once someone gets it right, once fusion becomes a practical energy source, everything changes. Energy becomes cleaner, cheaper, and more reliable. Entire industries would shift. Energy politics would shift. The countries that control fusion tech will shape the future. That's why the US and its allies are watching closely. It's not just about who builds the first working reactor. It's about who controls the knowledge, the patents, the materials, and the global supply chain. Fusion could reduce climate risk or widen strategic divides depending on who gets there first. And unlike fossil fuels, you can't sanction hydrogen in the ocean or lithium in the ground. What matters is who has the tools, the talent, and the infrastructure to turn that fuel into real power. So what do you think? Is fusion the future or just another mega project that'll always be 10 years away? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. See you soon in our next video.